Hi everyone, it is me again and I wanted to talk to you about two things this week that are pertaining to the skills that we're working on and the reading for this week. So, today we're going to talk a little bit about thesis writing, and particularly three-pronged thesis writing, and we're going to talk about the actual readings um, and kind of what I think is important from the reading that you should be paying attention to when you actually read them. Okay, so let's talk about the reading first, shall we? Okay, so I want you to know that it's on week two's reading, obviously, and it's called Indian Captivity Scan, so that's where you'll find it, and I have it here. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, what we did last week as well. So we talked about, last week we talked about sourcing, right? And sourcing is what a historian does every time they read a primary or secondary source, right? They ask specific questions of those sources to help them understand them better, right? And those questions, if it's a primary source, are typically who wrote the document, when was the document written, um, what format is it, what's the document written in, um, that could be a speech, a letter, a diary, those sorts of things. Um, who was their intended audience, and that will play into their purpose of writing it or um, saying it or creating it, whatever. And um, also the significance of it, right? It'll put it that those questions will help you put it in a larger historical context. Okay. Then with secondary sources, we also do um, sourcing, but those questions are a little different, and they're usually pertaining to. Um, who the author of the secondary source was, when was it written, but also what time period is it written about, what is their evidence, um, what kind of sources are they using to create a thesis, so also what is their thesis, and then how are they supporting that thesis, okay? So those are the sort of questions we should be asking. This week we're going to kind of think about primary sources. This week's actually a chapter from a textbook that I really like um, because it talks about captivity narratives which I think are fairly unusual and pretty cool. So we're going to talk about, uh, I just wanted to give a little background on the format of these chapters because we, we are going to be using a couple more in the future. So when you're looking at these uh, documents you're going to have some background um, that's going to give you some information about the documents and the time period in which they were written as well as then you're going to have the actual primary sources which are um, or in some cases will be secondary sources but in this case you had the captivity narratives which are primary sources okay so important about um, a couple things to look at in the the first section the background sections are this section right here which talks about um, how to read the documents specifically to get more uh, information from that that might not be laid out specifically in words kind of reading between the lines and how to do that um, also great um, contextualization of what's happening during this time period and then these questions which are actually sourcing questions right so the sort of questions you should be asking when you're reading each of these primary sources okay um, all right, so let me talk a little bit about the captivity narratives. Captivity narratives were created by people who are written by people who were actually taken captive um, in uh, to an Indian community, right, or tribe. Um, they were usually taken captive in an attack or raid or some sort of battle. They were essentially what we now think of as POWs and taken back. Um, and then their situation could be many in this case. They could either be taken back and killed, taken back and tortured. The women were often taken back and then became a part of their Indian culture. They were actually considered to be adopted into the culture and they would take on um, significant others, husbands or wives, and have children and be a, become a part of the culture. So there's a lot of interesting things happening with these and we can learn about many significant things from these captivity narratives. So things that we need to be thinking about when we're reading these, okay. We need to remember to think about Indian culture, right? We're not actually getting the direct voice of Indians from these, but we are learning a lot about Indian culture because the colonists that were cap held captive are living within that or within that culture and learning about it. With that, we do need to take it with a grain of salt because 
they are unaware of it, they're concerned as because they are captive, right? So their perspective of Indian culture is going to be different than an Indian. But despite that, we can still learn a lot about Indian culture from that. We can also learn about colonist culture, um, specifically a lot about religion. Each one of these has aspects of, and there's three, aspects of religion in them that are important. So think about how is religion playing a role in the captives lives as well as the narr the narrative right is there a purpose in writing this a religious purpose in writing this right because this is written after the fact and was sold as literature right as books that um popular popular narratives that people would read okay so think about the purpose there as well okay also, interesting thing about the literature, and I think is really important, this is a rare occasion when women are being considered as major players in um, that time period's literature. They were able to have a voice when women typically were not granted that option. So that's really interesting. And gender in, in general, gender in general, plays a really important role in a lot of these, especially Mary Rowlandson, which is the last one here. She talks about um, gender dynamics, not only from her life, but also within Indian culture. So please, please play, pay close attention to that, as well as um, some of the torture scenes in an earlier uh, narrative, women play an interesting role in that way too. So pay attention, they're very interesting. Okay, so now I wanna talk about um, the skill that we're gonna work on this week, okay? So in, right above the readings you also have this short video that's about thesis writing. This is a great little quick tutorial on basic thesis writing. It gives a really straightforward formula to writing a thesis and then more specifically a three-pronged thesis, okay? And when we're thinking about a thesis we should be thinking about an argument that's going to be the center of a paper, right? And it's um, important that the argument or the thesis is going to be related every paragraph within a paper is going to be related back to that thesis and within a three-pronged thesis you're not only going to have your argument but then you're going to have sources of evidence as your three different prongs right you're going to have three prongs that are going to be three different sources of evidence that's proving your argument right and then those three different sources of evidence would be um, further explained in your three body paragraphs of a paper okay so that's a very simplistic way to look at a five body paragraph paper but I think in terms of history writing it's a very good way to think about it because history writing tends to be very straightforward to the point and it's about the facts so when you're writing this week's thesis in your um, which is one of your questions for your assessment think about you're gonna be asked your, your prompt is going to be whether or not you believe these captivity narratives are good or bad primary sources. Are they useful? Are they reliable? Or do you think that they're not? And that's up to you to decide. But then you have to have three forms of evidence to um, support that thesis, okay? And you will not need to write your body paragraphs this week, but you need to think about what would those three body paragraphs be about. And think about specific moments within the primary sources that could prove your thesis okay so that's the skill I want you to work on today and it will help we will work on thesis thesis writing sorry throughout the semester but which will ultimately be helpful in the way that we are going to write our future papers and work on our future research projects so please take advantage of this moment to write a very basic thesis but will be helpful in building small skills to more impressive skills right all right, if you have any questions, please don't forget, feel free to email me at any time. And I hope you have a lovely week and I hope you enjoy reading about captivity narratives. All right, have a great week. Bye guys.